so most common abbreviation we should know with uh, uh, this heading would be dco that is damage control orthopedics etc or uh, early total care or early appropriate care and then uh, there are recent things which like uh, uh, dr ketan mentioned about up till to in 2017 prism okay so uh, but early total care or individualized uh, care would be the final thing prompt individual uh, surgical management like thing and then uh, the other other uh, uh, abbreviations we should know this sears and ards systemic inflammatory response syndrome and ards and multi organ failure okay. so before going to actual damage control orthopedics we should know about what is first in first hit and second hit so first hit is when patient has had an injury and patient already have an hit so that is that is the injury which is going to give him at the first hit and without knowing the parameters without understanding the parameters and if we go and operate him then it will become a second hit okay so if for that how to prevent the sec second hit so depending upon <clears throat> the parameters if we can segregate into uh, managing into a damage control or an early total care that can be planned so basically we have to classify polytrauma patient into different groups so whenever patient comes with an injury you do resuscitation protocol and then you divide it into whether patient is stable whether patient is borderline unstable or he is in extremes okay so if see there depending upon how you are resuscitated and how your uh, resuscitation is resuscitation is ongoing there will be the patient who is in borderline may sh shift to a stable uh, category or reverse vice versa depending upon how we are res resuscitating him similarly in other stages as well so what is dco so damage control orthopedics is the treatment of orthopedic injuries that provoke major bleeding and pathological inflammatory response while avoiding avoiding traumatic effects of major surgery in a patient who is already traumatized without giving an second hit okay so and the early total care which was later modified into an early appropriative care so here post resuscitation so those who are stable hemodynamically where the spo2 is normal lactate uh, lactate level is less than 2.5 mm uh, millimole per liter and without coagulation disturbances and have normal body temperature and urine output uh, more than or equal to 1 cc per kg per hour so they can be planned for an early total care so whenever you have an okay injury and we have done the resuscitation protocol which we have elaborately discussed uh, by three of our uh, speakers earlier so basically when you have a stable patient then you are you are going to see the parameters which i mentioned in the last slide and you are going to go for an early total care or early appropriate care if patient is borderline you resuscitate shift to stable variety and then you plan for an early uh, early uh, total care or an early appropriate care or if he is in this borderline he is going for an unstable then you can plan for an dynam uh, sorry damage control orthopedics okay and depending upon the next steps like uh, if he is in extremes then you, you really have to resuscitate uh, and then you shift him to from the last stage to the middle and then to the other border that is stable variety and then we can plan depending upon how this sirs system in inflammatory response syndrome so whenever i am teaching our pgs we gener gen i generally uh, tell these seven headings where we uh, treat an polytrauma patient first one is resuscitation second one is recognition next is reduction retention rehabilitation if require revision and very rarely in a care like this set of we generally rarely refer but rarely referral okay so resuscitation so whenever resuscitation word i have heard i have always heard a b c d e 
airway breathing circulation disability and exposure but for me as an orthopedic i want these things cleared so that i will be very comfortable <laughs> so airway i would means you know why why we are looking at airway so basically tongue fall blood clot saliva collection okay breathing already uh, uh, um, we have means in the previous uh, uh, presentation they have mentioned but still like whether first of all it is present or not and then what is the pattern of breathing whether it is flail chest whether hemonymothorax that we need to assess then circulation circulation see for the pulse then heartbeat and other things d is digestive system liver and spleen please see whenever patient has a liver and spleen laceration if they will not come up to orthopedics they are gone in er or they are gone at the injury site only so that is very very important so for me to take up case not not to shift <laughs> shift him to other department like uh, referral so basically to take into orthopedics i would see whether it is cleared or not next is excretory system that is urine output what is the urine output so if urine output is good then the patient is stable the his blood pressure would be well so in that sense and this after e we have the fracture then you recognize the fracture how the fracture is and depending upon that what what we need to be done we have to done it so rec after recognizing the fracture we splint it and then we plan for the fixation depending upon what we are going to do next genito urinary injuries so this we should not miss it so i am going a b c d e if i i finished f next is genito urinary injury which are very very important these um, cancellous bones which if they are fractured and displaced they will be bleeding continuously irrespective of whatever you are doing unless you are stabilized or approximated it is going to ooze if you are approximated then the oozing point from here to going to the other bone and the into the circulation is there otherwise if it is open it is into the soft tissue and uh, see you know how to uh, assess blood blood at the uh, genitals or the uh, meatus meatus specifically and then you take an history if patient is conscious his story is always adds value so you take history and if patient is not comprehending or not conscious or not giving a proper history or disoriented then you can take informant history that is also very relevant and then last one is j j i, I have not written there j is i generally tell ask your junior to do work <laughs> so that's okay next so how do you recognize so when i recognize i uh, see uh, the second part resuscitation part is done that we have already discussed second is recognition whether it is clinically you recognize it as an open fracture or a closed fracture okay so if it is open the management is different and closed the management is different so whenever you have an open fracture in er you try to <laughs> there are multiple things we have to th think about one is wherever whenever there is injury the roadside injuries the normal contamination is the coliform bacteria the coliform bacteria the doubling time is hardly 10 to 20 minutes so before they could reach the er there will be already doubling time has started already so initial 1 to 2 hours or the initial contact and initial period the golden hour what we are calling so we have to wash it we have to give antibiotic so that we can load it we can reduce the load load of the bacteria so either you see dilution is the only thing which we can do other than antibiotic so we may not be specific for the by by respect to antibiotic because which bacteria is going whether it will be resistant sensitive we don't know but dilution you wash it so every half centimeter wound you try to wash with 1 liter of saline so that is the only thing the dilution will itself can help you in reducing the contamination so once you recognize you classify whether the fractures are based on the etiology traumatic and then clinically you uh, uh, di divide into closed or open types and radiologically based on displacement based on fracture line based on reduce whether it is reducible or not based on whether after reduction whether it is stable or not and miscellaneous like uh, torus fracture avulsion fracture that will come into you have the recognition part so you have recognized as an orthopedic <laughs> and then after recognition you have you have plan for an closed reduction open reduction based on how much it is displaced reducible stable that's all and then retention in a splint plaster or fixations okay 
and then rehabilitation based on uh, it would be region specific or uh, if some sometimes occupational specific also revision either it can be planned up when you are doing it in a staged procedure or it can be an unplanned also whenever you have a uh, situation like that then you have to plan it and last one is a referral very complicated cases you can plan referrals so actual topic dco so <coughs> basically what we are, the uh, dco when we are planning and how it has come in the history is so definitely definitive treatment delays until physiology is improved that is the plan so popular as in 2000 it was initially uh, early total care and then uh, the chances of uh, second it was increased then uh, the other things have come up okay so then it involves staging definitive management to avoid adding trauma to the patient during vulnerable, vulnerable period the decision to operate on the surgical timing on multiple injury trauma patient remains controversial even there now also uh, the because we will not be able to assess completely uh, there will be some amount of uh, if it's a polytrauma patient with multiple system injuries definitely you are going to miss some or the other things so intraoperative hypotension especially in an, uh, any situation especially in a head injury because it creates an um, um, uh, that blood brain barrier circulation variation so it can be uh, increase the mortality okay and then uh, when when are you going to plan for an dco so parameters that help to decide dco are like iss um, more than 40 without thoracic trauma or uh, more than 20 with thoracic trauma and gcs of 8 or below when you have multiple uh, injuries with severe pelvic abdominal trauma and hemorrhagic shock basically what is iss i already uh, dr ketan had showed but uh, same uh, same slide um, so body it, it has been divided and this could be based on the scoring score we plan it so that i have mentioned here so and the other things like bilateral femoral fracture pulmonary contusion uh, which is there on the radiograph then patient has an other injuries then you have to plan it um, so whether it is there or not we have to assess it patient has hypothermia uh, that we need to assess and we have that there should not be increase in temperature like I mentioned in the previous slide and um, patient has an uh, in head injury with abbreviated injury scale of 3 or greater than 3 then uh, we can plan an uh, DCO and uh, it also uh, depends on the ILC values um, routinely we are not doing it but um, uh, 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 the literature says that IL values should be, if it is above, you should not do an early total care unless you can plan for a DCO. So, so patients who are at uh, increased risk of ARDS and multi-system failure during the acute inflammatory window, uh, they are characterized as such of this inflammatory markers. So uh, only life-threatening injuries should be treated like compartments, in, uh, limb, limb threatening uh, injuries should be treated or which are going to give life-threatening complications like compartment syndrome, fracture with vascular injury and reduced dislocation which gives severe pain, traumatic amputations which can give means bleeding or uh, infection later on and unstable spine fracture where we can have neurological issues and open fracture which I mentioned like a traumatic amputation kind of situation. So basically in a uh, the DCO it says that uh, like you have to think uh, divide it into a stable category or not and then uh, you plan a, uh, this, uh, this thing uh, early total care or when it is unstable scenario where we have come across this kind of situation there you do a DCO. So this is the crux of it basically and in an early total care basically <coughs> when uh, lactate levels are less than 4 when pH is uh, le uh, more than or equal to uh, 7.25 this is around the, the normal value and base excess so normally base excess means uh, uh, see if it goes by plus 2 milli equivalent or less than 2 milli equivalent based on that we say it is acidotic means acidosis or uh, alkalosis but even up till minus 5 of base excess we can uh, still uh, go for an etc early total care so goal is to 
uh, definitely fix the and treat the spine, pelvis, femur and major injuries uh, within 36 hours. Uh, the final outcome should be a decreased uh, delay to surgery, decreased complication rates, increased hospital renews. That is part of uh, the pro thing. And uh, basically, it should be surgeon driven. Okay. Thank you.